Monkey. Welcome to another shorty. Now, last week, we took a look at the Lego Movie and found it to be an engaging and heartfelt family movie with a message of creativity and teamwork. And as our friends at Traveller's Tales have given us so many hours of fun, with their Lego licensed video games, it was only natural that they be asked to create a video game for the Lego Movie. Which brings us to today's topic, the imaginatively titled Lego Movie Video Game. Released about the same time as the movie, the game takes the movie's plot and stretches it out to a video game's length, while adding in bonuses, a mini-game or two, and of course the ubiquitous free play option, giving players the ability to use any character to complete the level. And the game is entertaining enough, but I really can't put this one into my house of love. The co-development with TT Fusion adds in a fair few onions in the ointment, so to speak. The opening of level 4 for one, which was a few seconds of falling through a hole and landing in the old west realm, becomes a frustrating challenge of twitch reflex racing here, at least for the completionists, as you have to get good to catch all the golden books and the red brick. Yes, all the basic elements of LEGO licensed games are here, save for the in-game rendered cutscenes replaced with actual footage from the movie. Although the cast do return to add flavour and extra lines for the extended playtime and the mini kits, replaced with golden instruction booklets, which allow you to build vehicles and dioramas later on. Also, there are several hubs, rather than just one, with plenty to destroy and build while trying to get up to the next red brick or character unlock. Once again, I've had no first-hand experience of the portable versions, though I have researched them and discovered that they consist of 15 chapters each, split into three sub-levels for a total of 45 sub-levels. And some of them have very tight time limits and stud targets, reportedly. Of course, most of the difficulty in the PC and home versions is gaining the all-important 100% completion, which is half the fun. Yes, I had to restart that same frustrating section time, and time, and time again. And before you get the invincibility or stud magnet bricks, filling your stud point bar is going to be a problem. But outside of the on-rails challenges, the levels themselves are as well crafted as ever. Even if they're not as entirely destructible as one would expect. Being of course that brick-built objects in other LEGO licensed games had a high degree of destructibility, you wouldn't expect so much of this entirely Lego-built world to withstand your attack. And yet, it does. Which is rather disappointing. Also, extending a 100 minute perfectly paced movie to a 7-ish hour 15 level video game doesn't come without its own transition pains. While characters do get more lines, and the one joke spaceship obsessed Benny does get the better part of a level to himself, which flushes him out just that little bit, we do lose the telling real-world scenes, in which the story is revealed to be in the mind of a child, which takes a lot out of the ending, and makes the final battle rather pointless, in a way reminiscent of the Matrix path of Neo. Now, if you remember the Matrix Revolutions, in the ending of that movie, the Oracle was still inside Smith, and gave Neo his final pointer. Everything that has a beginning has an end. This caused Neo to stop fighting, and let Smith infect him, which allowed him to destroy the Smith virus from the inside. Naturally, this is no kind of ending for a video game, so the Matrix Path of Neo decided instead to have Neo fight a Mega Smith, composed of all of the other Smiths, and a whole load of fallen masonry, constructed into some kind of giant statue-like thing. It was silly and rather ridiculous, but it made for a satisfying final boss encounter. Still, it's bright and colourful, except for the necessarily menacing Octan Tower, and doesn't overstay its welcome at a succinct seven-ish hours for the main story. But there's scant replayability, with only 96 characters, of which only a handful might see any serious use, and no side missions or extra missions, outside of the four hubs, and a secret bonus room, 
which becomes available after completing the story. Overall then, while it's far from a bad game, the Lego Movie video game is an average translation of an excellent film, which is all the more disappointing when you consider that this of all movie licenses should have been the easiest to do. Well maybe that's the problem. It was all too easy to churn out 15 bare bones levels, slap in a few hub levels to give it an illusion of depth, and then churn out a DLC pack of extra trousers or extra cowboy characters just to wring the last drops out of it. Either way, everything is far from awesome with this game. Oh, I've been Funky Monkey and you've been watching another House of Love shorty. So long!